Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest. Riker, the Toronto Raptors have had some rough news in terms of Serge Ibaka leaving the Toronto Raptors and we don't, this is, uh, we're not sure when this pod's going to come out because we know the news is coming daily, hot and stuff, so we're not sure what other moves have potentially been made, if any have been, so we'll, we'll preface this podcast by that. We're recording it Sunday night at 4.30 Eastern time, but the Toronto Raptors made the, the biggest splash that they have over the last couple of years in re-signing Fred Van Vliet to a four-year, $85 million contract. Riker, this is the perfect deal to bring Fred Van Vliet back in. Yep, yep. There was a lot of tension around this whole story, and you're right. I think that right now I'm going to be a little bit more pessimistic about this signing just because right now the Raptors are in a position where they don't have any centers so I'm going to be a little more critical about Fred Van Vliet's actual role with the Raptors but of course by the time this is released there might be a little more optimism a little more positivity surrounding it but I think in terms of the dollar amount paid to Fred that's in line with what you and I both wanted we said 20 to 22 million dollars per year long term that's comfortable if you start creeping up 25 30 million dollars you're really hurting your cap space if you still want to be competitive for Giannis next season or any guy really that comes up in the free agency so that you still have more flexibility more 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 lean that you can bring in another max contract guy with Fred now only being at the 22 million million mark. But we were worried at the beginning that the Knicks or the Pistons would come in, give him that big money, even though this guy, he's never been an all-star, you know, he has one title under his belt, but he was not the first option. He was not the second option. He wasn't the third option. So it's like, you know, what is what we, it was a lot of uncertainty around his market value. So I'm extraordinarily happy that he stayed with the Raptors and for that price, Ben. Yeah, the price is honestly perfect because for a player at his level, we've seen that that contract sort of given out to the Malcolm Brogdons of the world, Drogics, Bledsoe's. That's the that's the Ricky Rubio's making that sort of money. So that that level of player, I'd put sort of Fred in the upper echelon. You can maybe make an argument for Malcolm Brogdon, but I'd probably put Fred at the top of that list in terms of guys I'd want on the Toronto Raptors and. Yeah, that, that's like a perfect dollar amount. And the thing about it, too, is Fred's only 25, 26. He's only had a couple of years of real opportunities in the league. So he's going to continue to get better, get better as a playmaker, get better as leading a team. And obviously, as Lowry phases out, we have our point guard of the future. So I'm I'm ecstatic that this deal was able to be made. Obviously, you and I made a couple of videos talking about potential sign-in trades for Fred Van Vliet. And those were all prefaced by... If another team is going to pay pay out Fred Van Vliet, if they're going to give the, Fred massive amounts of money, but, you know, this was a, this was a reasonable contract, so I, I'm happy with having Fred Van Vliet on the roster. As you said, it maintains the flexibility going forward. It maintains all that sort of stuff. And I guess what do you think this means now for the, the rest of the Toronto Raptors' backcourt? Because we drafted a point guard, and we have a video coming up on him soon. But, you know, Norman Powell's still there. He's probably going to look to maybe attain a starting position at some point. He averaged 16 points per game. Do you think we'll maintain that Lowry-Fred starting backcourt? Or do you think maybe we're, we'll start to phase Lowry out of the starting unit going forward? Because clearly in the playoffs, Lowry's our best player. So I don't really see that happening right now. But Fred has mentioned that he he looks to he's looking to get, have his own team to be a uh, there's podcasts coming out saying that how, or in the JJ Reddick podcast, was just a little bit discouraging for you and I, saying that Fred is looking to sort of be that floor general on the court, be the main guy. But, you know, with Kyle Lowry there, do you think that's going to change over the next couple of years? Yeah. So, I mean, this conversation doesn't really matter because Kyle Lowry only has one season left on his contract. So, if they want to keep him around on a lower contract off the bench or if he still wants to get paid and leave Toronto, I don't think it really matters. And Fred Van Vliet, the nervousness, the tension was around does he want to go to a bum team to really feel like, to really feel like yeah. he's the leader of it? Like, is that what's important to him? And I, and I made the argument that that makes no sense. You're not proven yet. You're not an all-star. You weren't the, you were the fourth option on the championship team. You, you're not going to go to the Knicks and make them playoff ready. You know, you're not that guy. You're six foot. You struggle to score in the paint, right? So I think what this contract allows him to do is to naturally shift into Kyle Lowry's starting position when Kyle Lowry either leaves the Raptors or transitions to a bench role after next season. I think this season we'll probably still see them playing in tandem. 
Norman Powell coming up into the two. And now you have all that pressure is kind of taken off Fred because he's not guarding shooting guards anymore. There's not as much pressure for him to be the attacker. Norman Powell, is he's a fantastic slasher. He loves playing above the rim. So, you know, you can be a more traditional point now. And I think that that'll play into into Fred's, you know, his, his best abilities. And he'll still be able to be a playmaker. He'll still be able to shoot threes. But, you know, there's not going to be as much pressure on him as the two guard to create in the paint. So I think that that'll benefit him, and that's why I'm excited that we kept him on good money and that he didn't leave for the Charlotte Hornet or the Pistons or the Knicks or anybody and just take money. I, I, I said, we need to at least sign and trade him if he's going to go. We need to get ba- value back. We didn't get value back for Ibaka. That's why I'm angry about it. But Fred Van Vliet, I'm happy to keep him around on this. I don't like him playing the 1-2 and two with Lowry. Playoff time, it's fine, but he's just too undersized. So I really like the prospect of you know, having Norm shift up into the two and play that for some stretches, make, make that the starting lineup. And, um, and second, I want to say too, congratulations to Fred Van Vliet, because he was saying, I want to get paid. He's an undrafted guy. And now to make it this far, getting $80 million. I mean, he deserves it. I definitely think he deserves that amount of money, not more, but that amount of money he deserves. Yeah, no, certainly Fred Van Vliet now the highest paid undrafted player in NBA history. So definitely shout out to him. That that's a that's a big move. Deserves all all of that cash. And you know, you brought up the the big contracts being thrown out there. You look at Fred Van Vliet's deal and then you look at what, you know, you you mentioned the name the Charlotte Hornets. They paid 4 years 120 million. So an extra $10 million per year to bring in a guy, Gordon Hayward, who's played one playoff game in the past four seasons when his teams have made deep playoff runs. So uh, that's uh, that puts it into perspective, showing that this was a great deal for the Toronto Raptors to bring back Fred Van Vliet. And we alluded that to his a- career as a flex. Just just the pause on Gordon Hayward. He made the he made one playoff appearance at the Jazz and flipped that into like two hundred and eighty million dollars. Like Mac, you know, over his time with the Celtics and now the Hornets. Like this guy, he just he his agent did something right, Ben. Get me Gordon Hayward's agent for whatever job I end up applying to in the future because that man got that guy paid. I have no idea how that happened, but You know, I digress on that. That's just uh, something we got to throw out there. The Charlotte Hornets will remain forever in purgatory unless LaMelo Ball is better than Michael Jordan, as LeVar says he is. But we'll (laughs) we'll leave that for future discussions. There's a rumor the Raptors are going to try and trade for LaMelo Ball. Maybe maybe that's the trick Messiah is up his sleeve, but I doubt it with Fred Van Vliet back. But, you know, we talked about Fred Van Vliet's age. He's only, you know, 25, 26. Do you think there's room to grow for Fred Van Vliet? In terms of, because obviously, if he remains stagnant, if he remains the player he is, certainly deserves that that cash that he earns. He'll uh, he'll be a, a pleasure to have on this team. But I think there's still potential, still room for Fred to get better. I think I've heard rumors that he's trying to improve his finishing this summer, and or not this summer, this off season, this fall, I guess. You know, playing, practicing with Kyle Lowry, who has learned to do it as a smaller guy, use his body to finish around the paint. If Fred Van Vliet can sort of develop that skill, continue to get his defense is great, maybe improve his ability to pass, playmake and stuff, but do you think there's room for Fred Van Vliet to grow as a player and do you think he, he could be capable of it? Because that would be a huge plus and make this contract even more valuable being a four-year deal, deal for the Toronto Raptors. Oh, there's definitely room to grow. I don't know if he'll ever grow into an elite inside scorer, but you look at smaller guards and none of these are perfect comparisons, but... Chauncey Billups, he played the later stage of his career being, you know, kind of a three-point shooter and playmaker. I guess he was also more of a two at times. But um, Jameer Nelson, who we drew player comparisons to at one point with Fred Van Vliet or Kyle Lowry. Um, You know, Jason Kidd, who's obviously more athletic and he's probably a Hall of Famer. So I don't know if I want to draw that exact line. But, um, you know, you can etch yourself a really fantastic NBA career as a playmaker first and then a lethal three-point shooter. Right, and you can look at what Steph Curry is able to do, and obviously he's six four and or six three or six four, so more height than Fred. But you don't need to be huge, and I think if you have a good supporting cast around you, which the Raptors do, Norman Powell and Siakam and OG, you you can really still eat alive a defense and you know find your spot on the court and be effective. So I think he can tune or fine polish uh, some of the parts of his game and become even better for sure i could see him being an all-star i can see him being the the future franchise player for the toronto raptors or him plus siakam so i i'm i'm optimistic about that ben 
Yeah. No, 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 for sure. Fred, Fred's a guy. We needed to keep him. We needed to keep Fred Van Vliet, or else there would have been. We wouldn't really have had much depth on this this team. I guess you know we drafted a point guard. We talked about potential scenarios to go after and stuff, but. We brought up some other names, and a lot of them have been talked about in terms of if Fred Van Vliet were to leave, if we were to do a sign-in trade. Obviously, we're not going to move on from Fred Van Vliet right now. I don't assume. Maybe you have other ideas or whatever. But do you think this signing sort of rules out a potential Oladipo move in the next year or so? And, uh, you know, another name we could potentially bring up in the backcourt? Because Depo is a free agent next season. As you said, Lowry's aging. I don't think it necessarily rules us out for one of those guys, but... I, this offseason, I think it sort of shuts down those sort of rumors. Yeah, maybe, and, but but I think it would still it would it would because this is the thing you still want to be able to make a bid for Giannis, and what we, we're seeing now that it doesn't matter how good the Raptors are, players are going to leave in free agency, so you need to lock them in. You need to they need to be basically a championship team. I think if they have any chance in landing Giannis, and what all reports are saying that he's either going to sign the super max with Milwaukee or he's looking very. Uh, you know, very considerably at the Miami Heat. So they need to be a win-now team. I think Oladipo trade would make sense for a one-season improvement, but I would be scared now with what happened with Serge that you'd bring in another guy on one year remaining, and then he leaves. And so you've traded away a guy who could be the, you know, a good cornerstone piece for your franchise. You've already locked him in long-term to bring in a guy who might walk again. Maybe a Lowry Oladipo trade if there was any market value there on the Indiana side. I know you would cringe with me saying that, but I think if you've locked in Fred Van Vliet and now you can slip Oladipo in at the two, that would make a pretty enticing team that could potentially make a playoff run. But in terms of Fr- Fred getting traded now, I I agree with you. I think it's unlikely. Yeah, no, I agree. C- certainly agree with the Fred, but you brought up a name and this was a thought I had today as well. Kyle Lowry right? Sergi Baca is leaving the team. We're not sure. Grisal is still up in the air, but even if he comes back, it's he's not the impact player that he was when, two years ago when we won the NBA championship. Lowry's the only real old guy on this roster, and as the biggest Lowry fan there is, I do not want to see the Toronto Raptors move. I want to you know preface the statements I'm making now after this about, you know, I want Lowry to retire as a Toronto Raptor, all these sorts of things, but do you think there's any chance that he does get moved, and maybe he is the trade piece because all of our pieces right now, Fred Van Vliet, OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, Norman Powell, they're our young core. They're not in the primes yet, but they're about one or two years, maybe three or four in terms of OG because he's a bit younger than those other guys, from entering the true primes of their career. Lowry's sort of ahead of the timeline in terms of those guys, so do you think that Masai Ujiri maybe looks at Kyle Lowry and says he had a tremendous playoffs, there's a lot of teams trying to make win-now moves, maybe we get some assets for Kyle Lowry and rock with the core we have over the next two years, hopefully sign Giannis, you know, this this offseason, especially where we lost Serge Ibaka, the, the other guy in Kyle Lowry's age range, or, you know, do we keep Kyle Lowry around and let him be the mentor he's been to this whole group of guys, be the leader and let him phase out slowly. That's what ideally what I'd like to see happen unless we get some crazy value in return. Or do you think Masai is going to be a bit cold-blooded and be willing to move on from Kyle Lowry a little bit prematurely? I don't think he's going to be cold-blooded. I think what we've seen is that he, Kyle, it seems like Masai just, he's slow to the game. So I'm hoping that there's something else. I'm hoping by the time this is released, there's a little more optimism in our front court and what that's going to look like. But right now, I don't think he's going to get traded. But if I was the GM, I would seriously consider trading Kyle Lowry for two or three quarters. You know, I'd consider, I'd, I'd consider bringing him for two or three lesser guys, get rid of that big, well, it's only a one year, so it's not really harmful, but... I, we have been seeing that there's teams that are looking to make a strong playoff push, that they feel like they're only one piece away, and I think it's very well documented and how Kyle Lowry elevates his game every playoff. So I, I would think that there's a market value for him, especially because a team that would acquire him via trade, they don't have to pay him over three or four years and all that uncertainty as he goes into old age. They'd be looking at a win-now situation, and if the Raptors could get back a couple of more younger pieces and maybe put a little bit more depth at the power forward position, small forward position even, and obviously the big gaping hole unless anything has changed since we've made this podcast the center. I just don't think it'll happen. I, I would do it personally. I'm not as I'm not as attached to Kyle Lowry, the player, as you are, but it would be very cold-blooded if something like that happened, and 
I don't know, we've seen the karmic retribu retribution of trading away DeMar and how it's manifested <laughs> itself now and losing Kawhi and Serge Ibaka, so I, I'm treading lightly in saying this, too. Yeah. No, it's a... Uh, you'd only move Lowry... Like, out of respect, you'd only move him to a team that he'd potentially want to go to. If we moved him to the Clippers, I think I might stop watching basketball. We'll have to shut down the YouTube channel. I'd, we'll we'll make a, a podcast about soccer or something and football. I... I, I wouldn't be able to see that happen, but who knows with how the league is going. Obviously, it's tough for us to dive into things now as we don't really know what this entire roster is going to look like. We're going to keep giving updates on all the news that sort of rolls out, so stay tuned to the Raptors Digest. You know, we have a, a lot of podcasts coming. We launched a website. We've been mentioning in the videos that uh, raptorsdigest.ca built it last weekend. We have uh, writers on there writing articles about, you know, free agency, our draft picks, all these sorts of stuff. So definitely check that out, raptorsdigest.ca. Throw it on the screen right there. But you guys are the best for making this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Check out the website. Riker, any last words on Frederick Van Vliet? Bet on yourself, Ben. He bet on himself all the way to the, the big bucks. So good for him. Good for the Raptors. Good for everyone. <laughs> Cheers.